It's almost heartbreaking to consider, but what if all that stood between us and the Iraq War, 4,100 Americans dead, hundreds of billions gone, American influence, respect, sympathy from 9-11 squandered, was a single lie behind closed doors from one man to another. In our third story tonight, this from the new book, Angler, the Cheney Vice Presidency. The Cheney profile largely substantiates Cheney's public image, secretive, manipulative, tipping America's historic balance of power towards the president, detailing how Cheney and top aide David Addington kept both Mr. Bush and supposedly top intel and counterterrorism officials in the dark about Justice Department opposition to warrantless wiretaps, driving DOJ leaders to the point of resignation while Mr. Bush was on the campaign trail and unaware, and with Bush's consent, undermining some of America's most uh, deeply held and longest held principles about limits on presidential power in spying on Americans, abrogating individual rights, and lying to the American people. 2002, late September, just as now, Congress weighs authorizing war in Iraq. Vice President Cheney briefs Republican House Majority Leader Dick Armey. The upshot of the briefing is Iraq's gathering threat that's really more imminent than we want to portray to the public. Cheney telling Armey that Iraq was developing miniaturized nuclear bombs, suitcase nukes, that Saddam himself had personal ties to al-Qaeda. Quoting Armey, I felt like I deserved better from Cheney than to be bull and he says the full world word by him, had I known or believed then what I believe I know now, I would have publicly opposed this resolution right to the bitter end, and I believe I might have stopped it from happening. With us now, the author of Angler, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter of the Washington Post, Barton Gelman. Congratulations on the book, and thanks for coming in. Thanks. You write that Cheney shifted uh, America's course many, uh, more than any terrorist could have. In what ways did he move us away from, from our principles? Well, he had a different interpretation of principles. Mm. He is a presidentialist and essentially an extreme presidentialist. He believes that the traditional notion of shared and overlapping powers is not correct, that the way to interpret the Constitution is uh, that the powers are completely separate, that the executive power belongs to the president, and he interprets that pretty expansively. So, and the other branches of government are there just to try to chase the president and catch him if they can? Well, they have their jobs, and, and the president has his, but his view is that in interpreting the law that he has to execute, the president has the final word, regardless of what the judicial or legislative branches purport to do to limit him. The, uh, the, the Cheney surveillance program, I, I think the surface knowledge of this has been that it had been unprecedented, nothing like it in American history. What, what did you learn about it that, that adds to our understanding of, of just how remarkable a thing this actually was? Well, there's a long narrative in Angler. It takes up three chapters on this, but the bottom line is that this is probably the first intelligence operation that was conceived and overseen by a vice president. Its mm. guiding documents were written by his lawyer, David Addington, were stored in Addington's safe. Uh, the White House staff secretariat didn't even know they existed, uh, and uh, Addington de facto had control over who got to find out about the program. The first rat in the Dick Cheney equation to a lot of us had to have been the 2000 uh, campaign prior to really the, the full presidential campaign, but the process by which Mr. Bush's vice presidential running mate was selected. Uh, one of those extraordinary things in which the chairman of the selection committee winds up selecting himself and recommending himself. And it got, I suppose, some questioning at the time and more laughs than anything else, as if there was some light bulb went over Dick Cheney's head and George Bush's head simultaneously. I gather from your reporting that this was not quite the innocent event or the process of elimination that it might have seemed, seemed at first blush. Well, I would just say that the official story about it that was told at the time wasn't true. Mm -hmm. One of the things that was said was that Dick Cheney subjected himself to the same scrutiny subjected everyone else to. Now, uh, it's an interesting concept in itself about how you scrutinize yourself, but it turns out he did not fill out the questionnaire he wrote, which was the most intrusive, uh, really, in the history of VP selections. And the cardiac surgeon who vouched for his health, as for, as, according to the campaign, uh, I talked to, and in fact, he didn't meet Cheney or read his medical records. All right, so we have, from the Dick Army story, we have him lying to the Republican House leader at the, at the critical moment before the war, lying to, the, to the, everybody involved in the pres vice presidential selection process, uh, keeping his president in the dark on, on certain vital pieces of information, used the NSA to spy on uh, administration officials overseas, and as you pointed out in here, made uh, the Secretary Rice cry by stalling the Gitmo trials that she wanted. Uh, or the president wanted. W ultimately, is this man going to be judged to have been worse for Democrats or for Republicans? 
Uh, if you mean that in a purely a question of purely partisan uh, yeah. politics, uh, I think the answer came very clearly in the campaign. Uh, is it Democrats or Republicans who want to use his name? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, think about it this way. In several of the Republican presidential debates, uh, when Dick Cheney's name was mentioned and questions about the vice president were asked, it was actually a laugh line for Republican audiences in those debates. Martin Gelman, uh, author of Angler, the Cheney Vice Presidency. Uh, once again, great thanks for some of your time tonight and all the best with this. Thanks.